Welcome back, everybody. This is the Normal Morning Show right here on TTT. You can also catch us on Talk City 91.1 FM, TTT Live Online on Facebook, and search up on YouTube, TTT Live Online, and you can find us there as well. Now I'm going to switch gears a little bit. I'm going to be speaking with Kelly McFarlane, who is a public relations officer of the Trinidad Tobago Association of Psychologists. She's also a clinical and organizational psychologist. Good morning and welcome. Good morning, and thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. So now today we'll be speaking about... A free public seminar on suicide prevention. But yes. before we jump into that, let's uh -huh. talk a little bit about the Trinidad and Tobago Association of Psychologists yeah. and their um, role when it comes to suicide prevention. Well, um, our role right now is public awareness. We really want to sensitize the public to the experience that people who sort of end up um, having suicidal thoughts and, and resorting to completing suicide actually have. There are a lot of people who get angry with people who attempt suicide or complete suicide, who don't understand why someone would do it, who are very intolerant to people who experience that level of hopelessness and despair. And I think in order for us to sort of start reducing the stigma that prevents people from getting help, and in order for us to be able to help people, we first have to inst instill that compassion in people and that understanding in people. Recently, there was a an attempted suicide in the East where a young guy wanted to jump off of a, uh, an overpass. Right. And people were passing and yelling, jump, go ahead, kill yourself, and stuff like that. Yeah. And we really have to do something in our society to help people to understand that it's not that the person is weak or the person is silly. or you know, it's Sometimes people just really feel that they are out of options. Yeah, you know, um, the thing is that what, what you're saying, and um, I tend to agree with, is that we have a mentality here, mm -hmm. like in the Caribbean on the whole, that, you know, um, either one is like, oh, they, they don't really understand what they're going through, so yeah. it's easy to say, well, you know, they're weak, as you said, or, yes. you know, they, they just sat and they don't know how to deal with it, mm -hmm. or they're taking the easy way out. But um, I think something as drastic as suicide, there's a lot more, is a, a lot more deep-seated issues that need to be addressed. Yes. And um, of course, there's a stigma around mm -hmm. it as well. If somebody um, confides in the average person, the average person with that sort of mentality mm -hmm. that, oh, you know what, I, I don't feel like living anymore. Um, sometimes the response may be, um, oh, that's not my problem. Or, you know, they may shy away from them yes. because they don't know how to yeah. engage in conversation. So, yeah. you know, um, how does the average person, the general public, you know, speak to somebody or, or reach out to someone who are having thoughts of suicide or have even attempted suicide? How they should reach yes, out to someone? Yes, how they should. Well, first of all, always go with an, uh, with, with, with an attitude of non-judgment. If you don't know what to say, simply say, you know what, I, I really don't know what to say, but I'm here for you. I will support you. I want to get, to get help for you. And, I mean, if you as a person can't help somebody else because you really just don't know what to do or how to help them, help them get help. There are professionals, there are um, mental health clinics, public hospitals, you know, have these services. And of course, we will get into, we will have a lot more resources at the event that I'll talk to you about later. Right. And, um, you know, just, it's really, sometimes someone just needs a listening ear. You know, improving your listening skills, your communication skills, saying, well, I can't imagine how tough that, I can't imagine how tough that would be. I've never been there. You know, don't try to say, well, don't try to reduce somebody's um, feelings and emotions or somebody's situation because right. what they are feeling is real to them, at least, yeah, even definitely. if it doesn't make sense to you. And it's all they are experiencing. And, you know, just ask them, you know, what, can, what do you want me to do? What can, right. How can I help you? Don't presume to know right. what they need and what you should do because that could actually overwhelm a person a little bit more. No, this is something that hits home, um, really close to home for me because um, I've had a few friends over the years who actually committed suicide. Oh, wow. Um, you know, so it's something that, you know, as Rishi said earlier as well, that resonates with, with him and it resonates with me. Um, sometimes it seems to be out of the blue. Are there certain signs that, you know, we should look for, um, you know, that, you know, a person may be contemplating suicide or a person may be in that such a low state that they, they may do it? Absolutely. And I'll tell you what, 50 to 60 percent of people who died by suicide had given some sort of indication some, to friends or family that they had that intention. And the thing about it is, do we recognize these signs and symptoms? So just off the top, um, some of them could be sudden, reckless um, behaviors, like, like things that would help 
lead to death, like reckless driving and so on, um, substance abuse, increase in substance abuse, decrease in mood, and then a sudden spike, a sudden increase in mood, because sometimes <clears throat> when somebody is really, really low, when they make that decision, either they start feeling uh, the sense of relief, I'm leaving. So, you know, they yeah. start acting a lot better and then they go. Um, also, just suddenly giving away things, putting things in place, saying goodbye to friends. You know, these, some, these are some of the signs that you, you could recognize. Definitely, definitely. Changes in sleep, changes in eating. <clears throat> now, the thing about suicide is... 90%, at least 90% of, of suicide, people who commit, um, not commit, sorry, complete or attempt suicide have an underlying mental health condition. Okay. So just recognizing mental health conditions sometimes is a sign for help. Oh, and of course, as we said, we spoke about briefly earlier, if a person starts saying things that indicate that they might be interested in death or leaving and right. dying and stuff like that, don't take it lightly. Right, you know, definitely. So. And just before we close off, sure. um, let's talk about when this public seminar is. Um, what's the date, the time, and location, please? Good. So we are the Trinidad and Tobago Association of Psychologists is having a free public seminar on suicide awareness and prevention this Saturday, the twenty seventh of April, at the Eric Williams Medical Sciences Complex from nine a.m. to eleven a.m. All right, well, thank you very much, Kelly You're McFarlane, welcome. Public Relations Officer and Clinical and Organizational Psychologist yes. of the Trinidad and Tobago Association of Psychologists. Thank you yes. for all you've shared. Wish you the very best moving forward for that um, seminar. And, you know, we do hope that it helps a lot of people and, you know, yes. to, to really get into what suicide prevention is, what it means, yes. and, you know, to help those who may be in their most dire time of need. Yes. All right, thank Good. you very much. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back.